Hello everyone and welcome back. So if you did somehow miss yesterday's video, I reviewed Jurassic World Dominion and in the comments I spoke with several people that have seen the film themselves and generally speaking, they didn't think of the film too positively. But this is coming from a very small minority, I mean, from what I've seen this film is very much mixed emotions, I've checked IMDB, I believe it's got 5 slash 6 out of 10. Whereas on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got 88% out of 100%, which is pretty good. That is the highest of any Jurassic World movie. And I did personally really enjoy Jurassic World Dominion. However, of course, I am entitled to my own opinion. If, you know, come June 10th, if you don't like the film, you don't like the film. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. I feel like it is... As I've been saying to a lot of people, it's very much dependent on what kind of viewer you are. And with that in mind, today we'll be looking at was Jurassic Old Dominion worth the wait, worth the anticipation and worth the hype? But before we get into it though, I do just quickly want to emphasise how helpful it is if you could consider liking and subscribing as it seems like hardly anything for you I'm sure but to me it means an awful lot so if you do go on to enjoy the video please do really consider it as it would really really help the channel out. But yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've spoken with several people about Jurassic World Dominion, sharing my thoughts, sharing their thoughts, and something that they mentioned quite a lot is the pacing of this film. It's something I emphasised quite a lot yesterday, and one of the real areas of this film that has a problem with pacing is the introduction. It's undoubtedly one of the bigger flaws of Jurassic World Dominion, and I feel like even if you were that average viewer, someone that has like no context this film whatsoever, you're going in blindsided, you notice the pacing, undoubtedly. Like, it's such a massive factor of a film to be able to tell a simple story well, and the thing with Dominion is that there's so much going on in such a short space of time that you can tell that the producers were just struggling to really uh, emphasise some of this story, and it is definitely one of the bigger flaws of Dominion. I would have happily waited an extra two, three months if it just meant that this introduction sequence was you know, more polished and the story was being told better because, you know, I was chatting in the Discord to one of my mates and he even said himself that he's not seen the film but he's read the plot and it's there's so much going on again in such a short space of time that you'd really struggle to put this into a film that's 2 hours and 17 minutes long. But, you know, other than the introduction, a lot of this film is paced very well. Like, obviously it's not perfect, there's going to be bits that annoy you, but generally speaking, other than the introduction, I was fine with the pacing. So my point here being if you're someone that goes for a well-told, well-paced story then maybe Dominion isn't so much the film for you but where it lacks in pacing and good storytelling it definitely makes up in stuff I'll get into in a little bit like action and cameos. However one place where Dominion absolutely thrives is cinematography. It was so well done and like as I said yesterday some of the scenes in this film make you sitting in you know the cinema on your seat it actually makes you feel small because some of the scenes in this make the dark dinosaurs kaiju levels big like i don't really have too much to say about the cinematography other than it was beautiful and that i'm really looking forward to when this film releases on dvd so i can look at some of the behind the scenes and actually learn how they got some of these shots so if you're someone that likes films for what they are visually then dominion is right up your alley or should i say valley haha <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was a really crap joke. But yeah, moving on, probably one of my favourite parts of Dominion is the action sequences. Now, this film is absolutely filled with action sequences, and several I'm not a massive fan of, but there's two in particular. There's one that's like bang at the start, the first thing you see. That's one of my favourites, and the mortar chase sequence was just epic. I loved it to bits. Again, like, the visuals help with it so much. Like, a lot of this film, again, stuff like pacing comes into play again. But a lot of this film definitely has flaws, but the vi visually it, it aids it a lot, as well as, you know, the sequences. Like, you'd think after almost 30 years of dinosaur chase sequences, dinosaur action sequences, you'd feel like it would get repetitive. But actually, Dominion's quite diverse in the way they approach action sequences. And something I saw someone talking about yesterday in the comments was the fact that this film isn't so much dinosaurs in the wild, dinosaurs in our planet, as opposed to... What the film's focused actually is on, which I'm not going to reveal because spoilers, but, you know, it, it's definitely good at times, but it also leads to a lot of this film's problems. But, yeah, generally speaking, if you like action, then the film's good, but it's, it, it, yeah, again, it's dependent on what kind of viewer you are. So what you've probably gathered so far is that if you like storytelling, then maybe Dominion isn't really for you. If you like action, it's good for you. If you like cinematography, it's good for you. But something that I'm 90% sure you'll somewhat like is the characters and cameos. As you'll soon see in my reacting to my predictions video, uh, 
someone that really has like a really nice redemption arc in this film is Henry Wu and you know I've never really liked him I felt like he was a bit of like a boycott villain if you will but this film he's got an entirely different dynamic and entirely different focus and he actually wants to fix his mistakes which is definitely a breath of fresh air and it's like you know I really like this character in this film along with many others like there's some I have issues with but generally speaking in the broader picture I like this film's characters. The OG cast's reunion actually made sense as opposed to what I thought it was going to be like. And actually something that surprised me quite a lot was Claire. I actually liked her in this film in Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I've never really liked her character. I felt like she was just always in the way causing issues. But in this film she actually puts in quite a decent performance and helps the story quite a lot as a matter of fact. I don't really know what to say about the Kayla Watts character because... It felt like he was trying too hard to be the film's badass and it just didn't really work. Like there was times where yeah it was really cool and it made for some really cool scenes but it just felt like she was trying too hard to rock her own vibe and it just didn't really work for me. Very happy to say as well that I'm finally at closure of the Maisie Lockwood character. It's never someone that I've really liked. I've never really liked the idea of cloning humans but you know this film definitely gives me some much needed closure to that whole saga. Saga? Saga. Saga. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I really like the reunion of the OG cast as well, especially when the Jurassic Park cast and Jurassic World cast sort of came together. That was something I'm sure you'll love. It was done really well. It felt good. It felt natural. I don't, I don't know why I said good there, but it, it just felt nice to see them finally together. And it was done so well to the point that it just it didn't feel quirky. It didn't feel cliche how I thought it would. And yeah. If you like the cast, then I'm sure you'll love them even more this time around. And moving on to the final part of, you know, was Jurassic World Dominion worth it, really? The dinosaurs. A lot of the CGI in this film was very well done. There were definitely moments, especially when it came to the animatronics, that it didn't really feel that good. But I was speaking to someone again yesterday, and I don't really mind it so much now because it feels like it's almost paying homage to Steven Spielberg and his use of animatronics back when Jurassic Park came out. And I'm actually surprisingly happy with the Giganotosaurus because, you know, in Jurassic World, we had the Indominus Rex, who was just a killing machine. Likewise with the Indoraptor, whereas this time around, the, the Giganotosaurus just feels like an apex predator. It's not going to kill you just because you're there. It's going to display its dominance and it's going to show you that it's boss. And that's exactly what it does. And it also means for some pretty epic action scenes, which I'm sure you'll love to. And perhaps one of my favourite dinosaurs in Jurassic World Dominion, the Dilophosaurus. I'm not going to say too much, but the Dilophosaurus creates some great irony in this film and... Uh, yeah, I'm sure you, you should really be looking forward to seeing them return. And then the herbivores, like the Ferrazinosaurus and uh, a Dreadnoughtus, it just shows you the sheer scale of these dinosaurs in this film. There's one scene which has actually been revealed in TV spot with the Ferrazinosaurus, and it, it was much bigger than I thought it was. I knew they were big, obviously, but it, the sheer scale of it in this film is just incredible to see. a Feriz Not just a Ferrazinosaurus, but a herbivore actually, like, be this I don't want to say apex but like powerful in a film it's it's actually really cool to see and to go back to when Steven Spielberg said feathers aren't scary this film contradicts that heavily because some of the scenes with the feather dinosaurs or actually the paleo accurate dinosaurs are just not not, not so much terrifying but just generally quite scary to to see and it's quite tense and yeah the paleo accuracy in this film I like to mention was on point it was actually quite surprising because we've seen the dinosaurs in the prologue and it, it's just it's just surprising to see how well Colin Trevorrow pulled it off in this film. So overall, as to answer the question, was Jurassic World Dominion worth the hype? Again, I'm just going to go back to the point. It's dependent on what kind of person you are. If you like a story, then again, maybe it's not so much for you. But if you like everything else, then it's a pretty great film in that respect. Do I feel like it's brought closure to the Jurassic franchise? Not so much. I, I definitely feel like there's elements of it that bring that closure, but overall, not really. And I'm a bit upset with that, but there was definitely some heartfelt scenes. But with that being said, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do consider liking and subscribing, as it does really help me out. And if you have made it this far, I'm going to say comment Ferrazinosaurus because it was absolutely epic in this film. Thanks for watching, and I do hope to see you in the next one.